a little. What? Oh, here we go. It's much simpler than the Kia Nero. It doesn't have any traction control or any of that stuff. It's all um, kind of built in, or you can't defeat any of those systems. So traction control, stability control, always on. This episode of Hot or Not, we're gonna find out exactly which one of these three electric cars is more fun. And to play with today, we've got the Leaf, the Nero, and the E Golf. So we're gonna see which car gets around the track the best. Zero to 60s drag races and lap times. Should be a good time. We've never done this before. All right, so this is the Kia Nero, which is an electric sort of SUV crossover. Okay, good. Are you ready? Can you hear me? And go! Well, let's look underneath the hood of the Nero. Yeah, and the Nero, it's concealed by your typical, like, you know, we see engine covers these days, but of course, no engine. We've got a motor underneath there. Yeah. And then, again, the electrical control systems, which, in, which include all those AC to DC conversions and, and all that good stuff. And they always do the orange wires. You know, that's kind of like a hallmark of electric vehicles. For safety, like if you're in a crash, yeah. if, a, if an emergency services p personnel comes, they need to know where those wires are. Where those are. things are, yeah. yeah. And again, we see the you know traditional 12-volt battery in there and all the normal stuff as far as, you know, putting in... Uh, your washer fluid and brake fluid and, and all those things are the same as a traditional car. But a lot more power, right? A lot more power. So here we're looking at 201 horsepower and 295 pound-feet of torque. So this by far has the most torque Heck yeah. of the three vehicles that yep. we have here. And go! So full throttle. I got traction control, stability control turned off. A little bit of torque steer. And it just fries the inside tire. I gotta be pretty gentle. Well, there's a lot of weight there. And as you can imagine, not a lot of not a lot of grip. That instant torque makes it very difficult to put the power down. So guys, do you hear that? Absolutely, obviously, electric motor, almost no sound, but you could hear those tires just spinning. It has a lot of power, it's still 201 horsepower. And from the outside, the car actually looks quick on a straightaway, it just zooms. But I don't know how he's doing on the corners, just, ugh. But it will gently rotate, which is nice, when you're braking into the corner, trail braking it in. Not fast though. Good, down the straight and across the finish line. All right, dude, so what do you think? Woohoo! How were the corners? Well, you know, strangely enough, or, or great, it actually turns in okay. okay. On trail brake, I could actually get the rear end to sort of come out just a little bit, um, which was which was a nice surprise. Okay. Uh, it it uh, can't put power down to save its life. Just not enough traction, Yeah, really. yeah, and you know, again, these cars typically come with a very hard tire on them, so they just there's not a lot of overall grip. But, you know, I mean, it's this heavy, slow car. What time did you do? I don't know, maybe maybe like a 111, 112 or something like that? Yeah, you did. There we go. 112.63. Well, uh, well, let's see what happens when you get into the Leaf because yeah. the Leaf has more power and less weight. That but, always helps. But still, it's up in the air. As always, we are right here at IMI Motorsports in Dakono, Colorado. Use the link below, imimotorsports.com, and come over here either to this go-kart track, which is about a mile long, or 120 acres of off-road playground where you can bring your side-by-side -side ATV or a motocross bike. Check them out. in the e-golf okay, is this on is this thing on okay now we're on all right I got to try and get a good launch of this thing and it's very hard to regulate an electric motor I'm going to be in normal mode which is the fastest the Kia Nero also has gasoline versions and plug-in hybrid versions but this of course is a full electric Nero and it has the biggest battery of these three 64 kilowatt hours and a total EPA range driving range of 239 miles and also the heaviest car of these three 
just over 4,000 pounds, about 4,067 pounds, according to the sticker in the door. Oh, a little, what? Oh, this, yes, I got it. <laughs> Why am I so bad? <laughs> All right, now I'm in the, uh, the the recently redesigned Leaf, which has 214 horsepower. Okay, ready? And go! None of these have frunks, by the way. No frunks. You know, like a Tesla would have no a frunk. You, you could you could wedge some McDonald's in there if you really had to. A, a burrito? Yeah, maybe. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's a better choice. Like, let's go with that. And again, orange wires, right? So it's high voltage electrical and this one's even more sealed up you can see though the, again you've got those uh, AC to DC converters all that good stuff here with the leaf we've got more power than the Nero with 214 versus 201 yes but the Nero has 295 pound-feet of torque while here with the leaf we've got 250 pound-feet of torque go. here we go it's much simpler than the Kia Nero it doesn't have any traction control or any of that stuff it's all um, kind of built in, or you can't defeat any of those systems. So traction control, stability control, always on. A little bit less drama from the Leaf. The Nero felt a little bit more active. Um, but the funny thing is on the Leaf, you cannot really turn off traction control or there's no sport mode either. So let's see how that does. And boy, can you feel that weight. And it has a very, very weird brake pedal that pulses up and down where the travel actually goes all the way down to the floor. Of course, as you expect, a lot of understeer. Doesn't turn in quite as well as the Nero. More understeer on entry, which the Nero is actually pretty nicely balanced on entry. So much better to drive than the Leaf. And again, if you didn't think, don't think this means anything, remember accident avoidance maneuver. You know, you want a, a car that's agile. It's not just about performance when we drive a car around the track. We're, we're testing its active safety. And, and performance always has a place in any car because that's your active safety. The better it turns, stops, handles, accelerates, all those things are what you need in those maneuvers. And you can tell by my ability just to talk very casually while doing a 10 tenths lap, this is not a hard car to drive. Yeah, so... Differences, good, bad? Well, this one is, is definitely less performance than the than the Nero as far as fun to drive factor. Okay. Lots more understeer going into the corner. Of course, we, we don't have a sport mode. We can't turn off the traction control. We can't turn off the stability control. So you're just sort of locked in. So. Well, uh, your time is almost identical to the almost Nero. Almost identical. To the one tenth, Within basically. Within a tenth of a second. That's incredible. And, and, and both of them so far are the slowest cars we've ever tested. Yes. And and that's at altitude where an electric motor shouldn't be affected or is not affected is not, no. by horsepower or, or wouldn't affect the horsepower or torque at all due to the air density. So hey, these two are gonna be really close because they're very close in horsepower, they're very close in weight. They are they both have Michelins on them. So yeah it should be interesting. Alright lining up I really hope I can win this one. You have to push the button inside to unlatch this charger port. And the battery here is 62 kilowatt hours. And it's got, of course, the fast charger port in here. And total driving range, this is a Leaf Plus SL, fully loaded. The range is 215 miles EPA. And it's also a fairly heavy car just over 3,800 pounds on this one. Oh, I got a good start. <laughs> yes, yes. Oh, I spun my tires a little bit and he got away, but he's pulling away anyway. Oh! 
<laughs> the leaf gets it. Uh, I actually won something. Okay, come up a little. Come up. Okay, the e-golf, uh, only 134 horsepower, but it is several hundred pounds lighter uh, because it has a smaller battery. So it has a less range, lighter car, less horsepower, but in a golf chassis. Ready and go! And so we look at the e-golf and we're looking at 134 horsepower, so the least horsepower uh, yes. of, of the group and 214 pound-feet of torque. And of course the torque number is really what electric vehicles are known for that give them that really good off-the-line acceleration. So that's and, kind of our baseline car. And also an eight-speed automatic, right? <laughs> no, okay, no, no, no. <laughs> if, you, if you say so. <laughs> Full throttle, pretty slow launch, kind of rolling the power in, I can feel it. Oh, that's a lot of understeer. That didn't feel like a golf to me. Flat out over the hump like no problem. Much brake pe better brake pedal feel than the Leaf, uh, not quite as good as the Nero. I'm rooting for the VW, not just because I'm kind of a traditional VW fan, but because this car is lighter, I hope it's more fun. More understeer than the Nero, about the same as the Leaf. Yeah, it doesn't want to turn. Nero was by far the best here. There you could see me like trying to just coax the thing into the corner and it just wouldn't go. Yeah, lots of understeer. And again, you expect that. These vehicles are heavy, even though this one's lighter, they're really, really heavy. I mean. They look the same from the outside, guys, but they weigh an extra thousand pounds over the equivalent size gas vehicle. And that means that you're just dealing with that weight. It doesn't matter that it's down low in some cases, it's still weight. And that has a huge effect on the car's ability to corner and brake and accelerate. Guys, the e-Golf is basically just an MK7 Golf, but electrified and this e-golf has the smallest battery of these three almost 36 kilowatt hours so about like 1.1 gallons of fuel equivalent as far as energy is concerned and a total epa range of 125 miles and this car you see here with all the options weighs about 3500 pounds base golf is a fun car to drive yeah and it probably costs a lot less money than this a yeah. lot less yeah it does and and so to me, I would be all over the base golf. Well, what do you think on time? Man, this felt like the slowest. It was. Yeah, yeah. 113.5. Yep, so these are the three slowest cars we've ever tested here. You may not believe this, but here we have well over a hundred thousand dollars worth of cars. The e-Golf is the most affordable of the three, almost forty thousand dollars. By the way, all three of these are fully loaded with all the options, pretty much. The Leaf Plus SL is almost forty-four thousand, and of course, the Nero right behind me is just over forty-seven thousand bucks. Of course, all these prices are before federal or state tax incentives. Hey dude, what's the time? Uh, 8.9 for the e-golf, then it was 7.8 for the uh, Nero, and then 7.35 for the uh, Leaf. So the Leaf and Did is the quickest? Oh yeah, the Leaf is quickest by a lot. Uh, hot or not? Well, I, I think I think you got to look in context of what these cars are designed to do, and none of them are designed to go around a racetrack. No. But as as I always like to say, you got to remember: good handling, good braking, and good accelerating are also active safety components. So, in a road car, you do want a car that can lane change well, that can corner well, that can brake well, and, and so those aren't just factors for fun. I mean, heck, I, yeah, we all love that yes. about a, a fun to drive car. 
but but they are also important factors in any car even if someone says it's not supposed to be a performance car that doesn't excuse it from being a safe car in an accident avoidance maneuver so performance always matters so yeah to me the kia was was the best handling car okay. and and again the Nero, it doesn't surprise me that it outhandles the other vehicles because Kias lately have been quite good in the handling department. Everything we've run, I've been surprisingly impressed with around the track. You know, the Golf being the disappointment because we know how good a Golf is yes, or can in, be. in a normal yeah. car, right? Yeah. As a normal internal combustion engine car. So just be aware of that. You're not getting this great performance car, but you are getting a very efficient commuter car that has, besides the brakes on the Leaf, pretty good handling and safety characteristics as well. So what I think I heard you say is they're not hot as far as track cars. Not even close. But you like the Nero the best. Yeah. A note and a correction before Andre closes up this video. First a note, if you're curious as to how the Tesla Model X and Model 3 performance did around the track, head over to TFL now by clicking on the link in the first comment below for a behind the scenes video and a correction. We did not turn off the traction control in the Nero or the e-Golf in this video, but it can be done with a little digging through the menus. And guys, of course, go back to tflcar.com for more news views and the real world reviews. And of course, our hot or not leaderboard, where we have a lot of high performance cars there. Yeah, and we and we just pushed the leaderboard in the wrong direction a little bit. So <laughs> I need a Ferrari or an M car <laughs> or a Lamborghini or I'll, something. I'll, I'll try work to get on you a some. Porsche GT2 would be nice. All right, I'll, I'll work on something. <laughs> yeah.